Well, here we go, folks. We've got this uh, very old rototiller, probably 19, early 1950s, that we can fix. And we've put a new motor on it. You can see that. But it's, the wheels are terrible. So you can see these things flop around in here. That's not good. So what we want to do today is put some new wheels on them. And so I'll show you how we're going to do that. So first thing is, we're going to take that off, which I've already loosened it. So watch. Magic! It comes right off. And the thing is, we're going to put new wheels on that have a bigger axle on them. That's the axle of the wheel right there. So we're going to put one on that has an axle that's that size. And that doesn't fit into this old hole here like that. So we're going to have to drill this one out so that that will fit in there. So here we go. Start out drilling. By the way, these are kind of clever drills. That's a taper drill. And it makes it easier to make holes. Um, bigger holes out of existing holes. Not great for starting a hole because you can see it's pretty small there. but Especially for big holes like this. And we're going to put it up here rather than here where it was because we just have a little bit more um, steel down in here. This one's pretty low down here. I don't want to cut too low onto that. So we're going to go right here. And it just goes like this. And see how that paper works. So, because it's tapered, best to drill from both sides if you can, which we can in this case. So, here we go. Alright, let's see how we're doing here. And voila, there we go. So, we have both sides drilled now. Both tires are off. There's the old tire from that one pretty beat up. So let me show you what the new tires will look like on here. So here's the new tire. It's about the same diameter as the old tire. But the problem with this old one is that because it didn't have any any distance here, you can see like there, it rubbed on here and made it difficult to run the rototiller. So the nice thing about the new one is it's already built with that on there. So when we put it on, get, the, get that bolt out of the way. When we put it on there, you see how, because of where that hits, it kind of holds the tire away. Now the other thing we're going to do is a trick that, um, first of all, let me show you this side. The bolt goes through here, and that's good. Now we don't want to put a washer on there because get it over here so you can see it. I don't want to put a washer on there because that's the bearing right there, not out here. We don't want it to rub on this bit. We want this to go round and round. You see it going round and round there? We want that to go round and round. And if I put a washer on this, I'll show you what that looks like. If I put a washer on there and then bolt, the washer rubs on this and this doesn't go round and round. So we don't want that. We want to put this straight in there like that. And then that'll be that side. But this side, we don't want to squash up against this bearing when we bolt it on there. So we don't want to bolt this. Oops. We don't want to bolt this right up, up against this if we can help it. Because that'll squash the bearing too. So what we're going to do is a trick where we put uh, another bolt on here. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. <laughs> there we go. So what we're going to do is put another bolt on here that holds it away, but you can see the threads end right there. So we're going to put a couple of washers on. One, two washers might do it. Looks like two washers will do it. Then we put a bolt on there. This isn't to screw it onto the... Yeah, I thought it might happen this way, so let's see if I can do this. Well, let me come back and show you after I get that bolt screwed on there because I can't do it with one hand. 
Okay, there we go. Got that screwed on there. So, you can see that the bolt is um, down against that, but it's not tight. Turn it around here so you can see it. It's still kind of loose. Can you hear it going up and down in there? And it spins very freely. And then the what we'll do is put this through the hole and screw a bolt against this. And that bolt pushes on that bolt, this bolt here, not down on the bearing. So that means that this bolt is keeping it from squashing the bearing and letting the wheel run very freely. So it's kind of a nice trick. For those of you who don't know, we're also going to use one of these things on the inside. It's called a lock washer. Get it in focus there. There we go. You can see how the washer is splitting like that. And what happens was when you squash down on it, that little edge keeps the bolt from turning. So you can put this on and it keeps the bolts from unscrewing as your vehicle is moving around or rotating or uh, vibrating. That's called a lock washer. So what we'll do is we'll use a lock washer. We'll probably just put it straight through like that. We might use one more washer on this on this side. Sorry, kind of moving around a lot here. Probably put another washer in there like that, just to give it good stability. Like that. And then we'll put the bolt and lock washer on this side here. <coughs> Sorry. There we go. So the bolt and the lock washer will go right there. I hope the washer will. It might not fit. Hmm. I didn't see that before. So we're going to have to see if that washer, how we can get that on there. Let's see if it'll fit. Do this together here. There we go. You can see it. And yep, that washer fits. Now will the bolt fit on there? It's just kind of a tight, tight spot there. And the bolt fits. Hooray! So there we go. That's how that'll look when we get it all done. Not too hard, but you see how the wheel is far away from there now. Not going to rub it all here. And it's got a good strong axle, runs all the way through, and we have it so that the bolt won't push on the bearing. I think we're getting close. Oh, by the way, these are pneumatic tires, and these were old hard rubber tires. These are a little better, and especially in soft dirt, it gives you a little bit more tire that, can, that doesn't sink down so deep and can help it roll. These were so thin, this way. They were thin like this, so if you got into kind of dirt as you were rototilling, these would sink down in. I'm hoping that these will be better uh, because they're a little wider and that'll give the rototiller more ability to move more freely as it goes forward. All right, let me get this finished up and then I'll show you what it looks like. Well, all right, we're all done. Isn't that pretty, the pink in there? That was the only color I had to cover up some of the rust on that wheel. But it's all done, and it rolls really nice now. And you can see back there how all of the washers fit together. Right in there. And you can see that the tires are good and solid. In fact, I'll show you how it rolls. Just hang on a second here. All right, so let's see if I can show you this. But it rolls very easily. You just lean back on it and away you go. So much better than it was before. So my old friend is fixed and ready to go. So just a shout out, those are Harbor Freight wheels. Best price ever. And that's a Harbor Freight replacement engine I put on this. Best price ever. And by the way, this is how old it is. This came from Montgomery Ward, for those of you who remember what that is out there. So I retrofitted this Harbor Freight engine on there. It's called a Predator engine. Um, and it does a great job. So, there we are. Thanks for watching.